Welcome to another Digital Anarchy tutorial. I'm Tor Olson, Software QA here at Digital Anarchy, and today we're going to be taking a look inside Avid Media Composer and working in Flickr Free, our dflickr software plugin. Flickr Free works with a wide array of different flickering problems you might be experiencing, including time lapse, um, the strobing that you get from fluorescence, the rolling bands from LEDs, as well as the variances in light in archival as well as slow motion footage that deals with all of that. So we're going to dive right in and take a look at some instances of where we encounter those kind of flickers and how to get rid of them using our software. So right away we've got this clip of Phil and if I play this back you'll be able to see the problem that we're getting. So this is a rolling band flicker. This is the kind of flickering you get when you're dealing with LED, cheap LED lights. I know that this was this video was shot from a user who was shooting inside of an elevator. So in that case, he was getting um, some pretty egregious flicker, as you can see. And the program monitor for the timeline, if I play this back, you'll be able to see Flicker Free was basically able to get rid of all those rolling bands that we were getting in this original footage. So it's a pretty powerful piece of software, and we're going to take a look at how exactly it works. So as you can see, it's already been applied, but if I go to the tool menu and open up the effect palette, you can see just within Digital Anarchy, this sub-menu, you'll be able to take Flickr Free and just drag it right into your clip in the timeline. And as for the interface, if I open up the effect editor, you'll be able to see how Flickr Free works. And you can see there really isn't a whole lot you have to mess with. There's no histograms or anything like that. Our mantra here at Digital Anarchy is that if you buy your software, it should just work. You really shouldn't have to watch five 20 minute tutorials looking at all the different parameters. It should really just be a matter of dragging onto your timeline and pressing a button or two. In this case, we have this preset dropdown, which is where 90% of your work is going to be. If I just open this up, you'll be able to see that we have a list of solutions to potential problems, including time lapse, which is what the plugin was originally built for. And then we notice that the algorithm that the plugin used to get rid of those variances in light worked with slow motion, the rolling bands is we're working with right now, archival footage, and computer monitors. So if I go back here, you'll be able to see there's a little more to it than that. So even though this is 90% of where you'll be doing the work, I'm going to explain how all these different parameters govern how Flickr Free is looking at our footage and correcting it. So first of all, there's sensitivity. Sensitivity is the parameter that looks at how much of the frame should be investigated for Flickr. So in the case of something like rolling bands, where you're really only getting it in these strips across the frame, the sensitivity doesn't have to be too high. It can range from 4 to around 15. In cases like time lapse, where the entire frame is being corrected, this parameter might be cranked up to maybe around 30, so that we're looking at the entire frame. Next comes time radius, which is probably one of the more important parameters. The way that Flickr Free works is that it uses frame interpolation, so it's taking a look at the current frame we're looking at and a certain amount of frames before and after to be able to look at the information in those frames and figure out what are the differences in brightness. So what time radius governs is those amount of frames. In this case, we're looking at 17 frames. We're looking at 8 frames before the frame we're looking at, 8 frames after, and the current. And really depending on where your flickering is happening, whether it be every 4 frames or so, every 6 frames or so, this will be the parameter that you change to match that. Of course, the higher you crank it up, the more frames you have to be looking at, and therefore the longer your render is going to take, because it has to look at all the information from all of those frames. Next comes the checkbox for all channels. This is looking at all the individual color channels for red, green, and blue on each of those frames. And really, this should always be on. There really is no reason to look at the collective brightness differences. So this should always be checked. After that comes Threshold. Threshold tells Flickr Free how much of a range in brightness we should be looking at with each individual pixel. So in the case of these variances, where we're getting these fairly dramatic uh, differences in light, 
We want to crank up the threshold to 30. In some more extreme cases, we recommend even th bringing up the threshold to 50, 70, or cranking it all the way up to 100. And lastly comes Detect Motion. Now because we're using frame interpolation and it's looking at the differences in light, sometimes fast moving objects that go through the frame can be interpreted as flicker and it will try to correct them and what this results in is this kind of ghosting or halo effect. It almost looks like if you watch the Matrix films when Neo or Agent Smith are in bullet time and there's all these after images behind them whenever they move and you get kind of a similar look. The one thing about Detect Motion is that Flicker Free isn't as effective if this box is checked. So generally speaking, you should try to test out the footage with Flicker Free with Detect Motion off, and if you're getting those halos and those after images, you should switch it back on. So those are really all the parameters. And just to show you how these values can affect the way that Flicker Free is interacting with your footage, I have another example here of some time lapse. So if I just bring this clip back to the beginning and play it, you'll be able to see that we have some we have some pretty egregious flicker, um, some pretty aggressive flicker that's going on. And what this is caused by is when you're shooting time lapse footage at a time of day where there's going to be a light change, such as at sunset, like in this case, you want to put your camera in aperture priority mode. And what that's telling the camera is that I want you to keep the same aperture and I want you to tell me what the shutter speeds should be so that we kind of get a consistent looking image in terms of brightness. Now, the camera isn't perfect, so there is some mechanical error that goes into that and that's what we're seeing here. The camera is not quite perfect in how it's governing the shutter speed and that's why we're getting these flickers across the screen. And it's affecting the entire frame. So if I go into the finalized version that we have with Flickr Free attached, and I play that, uh, you'll be able to see that we were able to get rid of all the Flickr and make it look awesome. So let's take a look at the effect controls for this guy. You can see right away that we have cranked up the sensitivity to 30 because we know that the entire frame is being affected by this Flickr. And we wanted to keep our time radius pretty wide too, just cause this, these variances in the light that we're getting are spaced apart uh, a decent amount of frames. So we wanted to be able to get a wide breadth of frames to look at and average out the light differences that we see. And that's really all there is to it. Um, if you want to take a look at how Flickr Free can work on your own footage, um, especially your slow motion, time lapse, or rolling bands, that's a Rolling bands is probably one of the more popular problems that our clients run into on last minute projects. You can go to our website at digitalanarchy.com. Uh, we have watermark trials there. And we've got some other plugins there, some other goodies, uh, some fun tutorials. So do feel free to check us out. So thanks again for watching. My name is Tor Olson, software QA here at Digital Anarchy, and we'll see you in the next tutorial.